do malicious incursions, cyber vulnerabilities, and a central character in Homer's Iliad have in common? Why, yes, this podcast. Hey, everybody, welcome to episode number 590 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. My guest this week is Margaret Schmidt, General Manager of the Microelectronics Security Division at Amida. Today, Margaret and I are delving into the world of chip security. We talk about common security threats facing microelectronics devices today, the details of Amida's flagship Achilles solution, the innovative ways that Amida is enhancing security throughout the semiconductor life cycle, and where Margaret sees hardware security headed in the future. So without further ado, please welcome Margaret to Fish Fry. Hi, Margaret. Thank you so much for joining me. Amelia, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about Amida Technology Solutions. What are you guys all about? What kind of solutions are you providing? And what industries do you serve? Well, a little background on Amida. Amida is a software company, and we're focused on solving the most complex challenges in data governance, data interoperability, and, of course, data security. And uh, actually, Amelia, we're coming up on our anniversary, June 1st. It's going to be our 11th year. It was founded in 2013 by Peter Levin. And you may be familiar with Peter's name. He was the co-founding CEO of DAFCA, which was an EDA company focused on design for debug solutions for microelectronics. Fantastic. So talk to me about the driving force behind the creation of the microelectronics security division at Amida. Amelia, we are living in a connected digital world where everything runs on a chip. So the security of these devices isn't just about protecting individual pieces of hardware. It's about ensuring the safety of our critical infrastructure and vast networks that we rely on every day for our healthcare, banking, our transportation. Think of energy. And of course, think of national security, just to name a few. And unlike software, Amelia, that can be patched, compromised hardware cannot be easily patched. And if you just think about space and how exciting the space technology and innovation is, well, in those applications, that hardware is nearly irreplaceable and the impact and risks are even more pronounced. And as the threat is increasing, to microelectronics from cyber attacks, from malicious hardware modifications, it's clear that this threat requires an innovative and proactive approach to mitigating the risk to these critical electronic systems. And of course, over more than a decade, Amida has built a deep competency in a number of areas, including security. AIML. So the creation of the microelectronic security business unit really highlights our dedication to advancing cybersecurities so that we can outpace today's cyber threats, ensure that we have a robust and secure semiconductor supply chain for those critical applications, critical infrastructure, of course, being of paramount focus. That makes sense. So What are the key strategies or solutions that this division provides to enhance security throughout the semiconductor life cycle? Can you talk to me about some specific examples? Definitely. You know, as you look at microelectronics and you look at the chip attack surface, hardware, it's an expansive attack surface. And it's, as I mentioned previously, increasingly susceptible to in-field attacks and malicious inclusions. So we need a solution that will proactively let us identify vulnerabilities in those semiconductor chips and give us an opportunity to 
harden those designs during the design phase and ultimately create more cyber resilient systems with the capability of monitoring these designs on an ongoing basis. So to break that down, we need the ability to one, scan the chip attack surface, detect and identify vulnerabilities, and of course, rank and prioritize these so that designers can take action and mitigate the risks on their designs. And Amita's approach that we've been pioneering is a patented security solution, which does exactly that. It will analyze the chip attack surface, it will identify design vulnerabilities and give designers and design organization the information they need to go and cyber harden those designs early in the design phase. All right. So thinking about this evolving landscape, what kind of security threats do you see these kind of devices facing? And what do you see for the future here? You know, what we can see is a growing number of threats being detected, new attack vectors being exploited. So let's go ahead and break that down. First of all, we see that one, we have a very distributed semiconductor supply chain. And of course, these are tremendously complex designs, leveraging open source RTL code, leveraging third-party IP, and we need an efficient and reliable process in order to, as we discussed, identify vulnerabilities in the chip design, mitigate those risks, and ensure that we have a robust supply chain for these critical electronic systems. And in the current landscape we see, let's just talk about open source for a second. Short time ago, we learned about the open source threat from the Linux XC exploits. Well, if we look at open source RTL designs and open source technology, this, of course, is a potential vulnerability that we want to ensure that we're signing off and we're looking at quite closely. So, Amelia, we talked about the distributed nature of the semiconductor supply chain. We talked about a major concern from open source RTL code for compute cores or other functional IP blocks. We're looking at analyzing the chip for inadvertent vulnerabilities built into the hardware that can be exploited. Now, let's look through the windshield as it were, what we predict for the future. Certainly, we can predict seeing hardware security threats evolving, attack vectors evolving like we are today. I think not a quarter goes by, not a year goes by that we're not seeing new derivations of previous attacks or new attack vectors being introduced and being exploited by bad actors. Of course, with AI ML, that having tremendous potential for supporting cybersecurity defenses, but of course, also for offensive applications as well, a potential concern there. But Amelia, to round it out, what I can already see happening and I'm quite excited about seeing in the future is collaboration. Collaboration within semiconductor industry, within the EDA industry, and with security researchers and academia. I see this playing a vital role in outpacing these threats and developing the next generation of solutions to counter these attacks and improve our cyber resiliency of our critical networks. I love that. Okay, so let's talk about Achilles. So how does Achilles enhance chip security and what does this mean for the future of device protection? A couple of points to that. So I'll, I'll, I'll break that down into a couple of areas. First of all, let's start with where we are today. Today, Conventional methods primarily focus on known attack vectors. And you've heard me refer to attack vectors several times. What I mean is understanding how attacks have happened in the past and making sure that same mistake doesn't happen twice, which is absolutely the right thing to do. But this is a significant challenge because, you know, as we've just discussed, adversaries are constantly developing new attack vectors that could elude those conventional methods. And the dynamic landscape that we're seeing makes it increasingly difficult to stay ahead of potential threats. So really, we need to be much more predictive. We need a predictive way to 
scan a design, a given design, the chip attack surface, and detect those unknown, unintentional, and undiscovered device vulnerabilities. So to address that need, to address that objective, the Achilles approach involves three different steps. One is, of course, scanning the attack surface. We start by thoroughly scanning the device attack surface to identify those potential vulnerabilities. And of course, this is an initial assessment, really crucial for understanding the security posture of that device. And then once those vulnerabilities are identified, designers can then work on improving their device's cyber resilience security level by reducing that attack surface. And that could be redesigning, making changes to their RTL early in the design phase. It could mean even taking a step back and reviewing their security architecture altogether. And by doing this, by reducing that attack surface, this makes it harder for adversaries to find and exploit weaknesses. And ultimately, as that design is hardened, will not only characterize and, and harden those devices, but then you know, going forward, looking to instrument these for in-field surveillance. So you really are hardening the device and providing an ongoing monitoring against evolving threats and in improving the overall robustness of that device's security throughout its life cycle. All right. So how integral is artificial intelligence to your technology and what future developments can we expect to see? There are uh, quite a few applications that I see, a wide range of applications actually for artificial intelligence and machine learning in cybersecurity as a whole, of course, but also specifically for microelectronics uh, security. I can see how these have the potential to really translate, of course, into the user experience, a more secure design, as well as training and education. I think, especially on that training and education side, that's quite exciting because, of course, the area of semiconductor security is one greatly under development. And of course, we're going to need multifaceted, talented engineers who might not be experts in security. So I definitely see a training and education opportunity there through AI and ML. But let me come back to Amita and what we've been working on. We've patented a technology around machine learning to detect anomalous behavior. And that is using these models to distinguish between a normal device and anomalous device behavior. And of course, that's one potential application but as we look at, okay, what, what does the future look like? What's going to happen next? I certainly see this in the area of microelectronic security as being a tremendous tool in our toolbox to enhance our solutions, both through that usability aspect, but of course, in, in creating that more secure design. All right. So let's talk about those engineers. So what professional advice would you give someone interested in the field of hardware security? The journey forward, the growth of microelectronics and semiconductor security, certainly, as I mentioned, it's an exciting and growing field. It's a largely uncharted territory. I talked about the need for collaboration with academia, research engineers, semiconductor designers, and EDA. So as we look at that growing field of hardware security, my advice is that it is a fantastic area to grow your skills, your expertise, and make a positive impact on technology and solutions that are truly fundamental to protecting our critical infrastructure and the technology innovations that we're putting in place that are having such a global effect with communications, with healthcare, with transportation, with energy. It's just truly an area where as an engineer, I feel there's so much opportunity to truly move the dial and transform the industry from a personal level. Looking at what that person might need to have as far as skill sets, I see a multifaceted uh, skill set really being of great value. Experience, of course, in the semiconductor design flow, experience in developing software tools, AI, ML, we talked about And a solid understanding of that hardware-software interaction, I think, is, is really key. Excellent. 
All right, Margaret, it's time for your off the cuff. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there. What would you have? Amelia, anything based on chocolate. Since I'm, I'm speaking to you from the Silicon Valley, it's still the morning, but we're getting into to lunch. So we're not quite into lunch here. So maybe if I could have a cafe mocha, a little blending in toward the chocolate side of things, I think that would be great. I love it. Well, Margaret, this was super cool. Thank you so much for joining me. Amelia, thank you so much for the opportunity. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into X, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we are now on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. And, of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of July 12th, 2024, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.